morning. I'm Lynn and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. It actually feels a little warmer today uh, and the ground is already starting to get mucky. So today is the day that Arnie was going to remove manure. So I think he's got to go at it pretty quickly today because apparently the temperatures are all going up in the next week and if he doesn't move fast he's going to get bogged down in the fields and we're not going to get that manure out of here so that's what he's going to be doing today and in the meantime i'm going to go around the barns and do my thing so let's go on inside first things first we have to feed the demanding cats buddy's got his food <coughs> tom's just gotten his we're going to head down and give Scotty his food. Some people have commented, why would you feed the barn cats? Won't they just eat the rats and mice and stuff and you don't need to feed them? But the reason you feed your barn cats is that a healthy, well-fed cat will actually catch more rats and mice than one that is relying on it for survival. So it's kind of like the, with people, uh, when we first started farming and stuff, when we were hunters and gatherers, all of our time and effort was put into catching the prey so that we could eat and we weren't able to do anything else with our time. And people didn't live too long because sometimes you didn't catch anything and then you got weaker and weaker. The same theory goes with the cats. A well-fed cat is going to have more free time on his hand and then he's going to play. And anyone who has cats know that, knows that uh, their favorite plaything is little animals that run around. So they may not be eating the mice and rats. But they're probably going to catch a lot more because they're stronger, healthier, and they're going to catch and molest and kill all these rats and mice because they're bored and now they have lots of time to play with them. So that same theory follows through with just about everything. Um, they used to think that the Egyptian slaves that built the pyramid were slaves and maybe mistreated. But in order for something to perform at its optimal best, you want them well fed. Yeah. Same goes for people. That's when you get the most creative people because they got time to spare. They don't have to be hunting yeah. all the time. That's where agriculture came in. We could manage our time and our eating to a certain amount of time. And then we could spend the rest of the time thinking up great inventions to save the world and same with the cats even same with sheep sheep that are fed are likely to gain weight and do a little better than those who have to forage for themselves not to say that they can't do that because they can I'm just saying um, if you have to forage for your own food, you're going to do that all day because it's going to take a lot more work to get the volume that you need to eat. So you might be eating all day long, whereas if you have to go to a trough like this, you're going to get your fill. You're going to lay down and chew your cud. And when you lay down and chew your cud, you're growing, you're digesting, you're relaxing. Now I'm late to the barn because I was doing all the house chores and most of these guys have eaten a few at the troughs but a lot of them are laying down already including the lambs so the hellion girls are back there even laying down and you know how rare that is and there's the little hellion girls Those sisters are always, always together. And then these sisters are together too. They do prefer at nap time to find their family groups and lay together. During the day when they're running around, they'll all play together, but they do seek out the comfort 
of their siblings or their mom or whatever when it's nap time. And way back there in the back barn, that's Buddy, I believe. And what he's doing back there, you saw he just got fed. Now he's mousing. Oh, it's Tom. But he was rooting in there. He's looking for mice. He's full now. Now he want, he's pumped full of vigor and he wants to find something to occupy his time, like chasing mice and birds around the barn. Bottle time. Now that they're down to one bottle a day, they're a lot better at the bottle holder. They're not full and playing around. <laughs> kind of goes on the same theme. If you're full, you, you're uh, gonna find other things to do to occupy your time. With these guys, they were just playing with bottles and stuff. But now they're a little more hungry, so they eat their whole meal. I guess on that topic to keep following through about predators and stuff you know we had a severe rat problem in the barns the last few months finally we got some poison in here and I can always tell when it's working because when I come to clean the drinkers out each morning they're pretty clean now in the past when I'd come here all these edges would be filled with filth and dirt and same with the water where the rats had been walking along there with their muddy feet so you could see their footprints they'd poop in the water and the drinkers were filthy and we've got three cats here but three cats for the size of our barns are not enough to keep to keep the rodents under control so it's always a fine line with that because if if you said, well, just get more cats, then you run into another problem because cats also carry diseases if they're walking through the hay and so stuff. It's keeping that balance in nature. If you leave it to nature, it will balance out on its own because the predators are around. They will only reproduce and survive if there's prey for them to eat. When the prey diminishes, they starve, they die off, they don't have as big a litter. And then when the population of the prey animals increases, then of course the predators increase. And so probably the best thing is not to tamper with nature, let nature take its course, but a farm is an artificial thing, a man-made thing. We have grain and, and feed all over the place, so it's only natural that rodents will come in here and repopulate and get out of control because the farm is actually tampering with nature. Same with people um, hunting the coyotes to stop predation on their sheep. Well, when you kill all the coyotes, again, you're going to have a prey population overload. You're going to have tons of rabbits, rats, mice, and that's no good either. So, if at all possible, I would say we like to anyway not tamper with nature until we absolutely have to. So, as you know, we don't hunt coyotes on our property to keep, keep our sheep safe. We bring them indoors at night. We lamb indoors. And we have a really nice coyote population here that leaves us alone. They survive on the rodents because obviously there are a lot around here and we live in a nice symbiotic relationship. Oh, that was pretty good, Looney. Hi. How you doing, sweetheart? Hi, how you doing? Oh, Looney, you're such a lovely girl. Yeah. Oh my goodness, you want to be pet. This is her first time coming up for petting. It's kind of like watching your baby walk for the first time. Good girl. 
lambs in this pen. These are the young ones. Are really starting to grow fast now, I find. Like, I'm in here every day and I'm noticing the difference. This pen's got a lot more personality too. Look at, I've got followers in here. Hi, you guys. Hi. I'm beginning to like this guy here. The one with the dirty bomb. He's got a bit of diarrhea, I see. But if I can get a good angle on him. Hey, buddy. Put your head up so we can see how nice you look. He's gone in there right beside Luther. And this is a good mom. Can you move? Move back so I can look at the lammies. Go that way. Go on. You don't need to go in where the lammies are. Hi, you guys. So here we have Luther. And someone was talking about that maybe he's losing a bit of condition. He may be losing a bit because he's not nursing anymore because his mom died. But, I mean, his bones aren't showing or anything. I can see he needs more, a little more weight, but I like lambs really chubby. So he's well within the no problem range. But I wanted to mention that size has a lot to do with food and food intake. So they're all being set, fed free choice feed here, creep feed and hay. But a lamb the size of Luther or those two bigger guys there are going to have to consume more feed than a smaller lamb would have to in order to gain weight. So you want to be a really good eater if you're a bigger sheep. That's the bonus of the little sheep. They can gain weight quicker because they don't have as much body mass to fill out and bones to grow and stuff like that. But no, whether you're big or small, a, sh a lamb that's eating really well is gonna do better than one who is shy at the feeder or lags back or doesn't have the drive. And you actually want to select for those sheep because those are the, the ones that want to live. They grow fast. They're going to pass that drive on to their lambs and you're going to have less trouble with your lambs in the future. Because truly, you, you think that all sheep would eat but there's actually, in every group of lambs, you'll find some that are really poor. And you see them, they just nibble and they walk away. And it's a vicious circle like the cat with the mouse. If you start to go downhill, you get weaker. You get less motivated. You get lethargic. If there's any struggle to get your feed, if you have to pull harder, if you have to push a, another lamb out of the way, you're probably going to say, I'll, I'll just go do that later. Go lay down, and then when you go back later, guess what? The more aggressive ones have already eaten it, and then you go downhill even more. So you do want to select for vigorous lambs. Those greedy ones that you want to, you say, oh my God, like, I just fed you. You're, you're screaming for more, but, but those are the ones. They're the driven ones. So in a flock, you're going to have some sheep that are just poor keepers. And we have found with our flock that if you get too tall, those sheep tend to be poor keepers because, like I was saying with Luther, they have to eat such a volume of food that they just can't keep the weight on. They, they have to eat constantly. And of course, that's not practical to have to be feeding your sheep that amount of food. 
So you want it somewhere where um, the whole flock is eating the same amount and they're all staying in good condition. Anyone who doesn't stay in condition on the feed of norm for your sheep is probably someone you don't want to keep around and that would be considered a hard keeper. An easy keeper would be the one that got fat when all the other ones are at a normal size, at the level size. Those ones are probably the really motivated ones that are in the trough even when they don't have to be. But they're, in my opinion, they're, they're great sheep to have around. I'd rather have an over-motivated sheep than one that has no drive whatsoever. So, and the other thing you can have is one like this guy. He's a bottle baby, and as you know, we've weaned off the bottle babies in this pen. And here's his sister. His sister used to be poorer than he is, and you can see that she's chunkier than he is. She adapted very well to being taken off a bottle, as did everyone else in here. They, they got on with eating food and, you know, were hungry, wanting the, the nursing for uh, comfort and stuff, but they didn't need it. They, they were on their way. So he's part of the group, but as you heard just a second ago, he was crying and he's following me around the pen. He's not adapting. He wants to be hand fed still and he's not at the trough with the others. He's more possessed about getting easy feed than working for it. He has no drive. There he goes, you see? So he's hungry. I could break down and give him food, but he is way old enough to be eating on his own now. So I'm just going to let him figure it out. If he went really weak, I would feed him, but he won't. There's, as you can see, our barn is full of food and he, it's not like he doesn't know how to eat. He knows how to eat, but he's just lacking that umph that the sheep need. And you know, he, he would be a call sheep for sure, because those are traits that I don't want to pass on even to other people. And he does have a mom in here too who has a little bit of milk and she's probably not feeding him anymore either. So those are, those are sheep that you don't want to keep in your flock. And that also would be considered a hard keeper. So when, if you're on test, you'll do weights at 50 days because that indicates, it lets you know how well the mom has done, how well she's feeding her lambs because those weights are based on drinking milk off mom. But then there's the 100 day weights, which show you how they did once mom stopped feeding them, like this guy. Some of them will keep on gaining and will, will just do phenomenally well. And others will pout, like that little guy. And they'll lose weight and they'll have really poor 100 day weights, even if they had a fantastic 50 day weight. So the different weights that people do at the different ages tell you that. They tell you how well mom did for the first 50 days and they tell you how well that lamb did for the 100 day weight. Uh, they are good weights to know. What you ideally want is to see them with consistent growth through both stages. So for instance, this number 19 ram here, he's a single. So someone will say it's not fair because he's a single. But I don't care if he's a single. He's so far above everyone else in weight gain and size. And it's not like he was born an enormous lamb. He was born a big lamb, but he was born normal big, like for a single, typical single size. So without weighing his mom and without weighing him you don't have to do that it gives you precise measurements but doesn't I mean who cares if he's five pounds more or less than the other sheep you want the ballpark but basically what I can tell you just from looking at that ram is that his mother is a fantastic mother 
and he's past 50 days now. So I can also tell you, he's a fantastic eater as well. So his mom would not be on the call list and I can tell you he won't be on the call list either because, because he's a star in the barn, barn, right? Likewise, if I find a little lamb, like this one, who's showing a little bit of pot belly. Pot belly a lot of times means that they're kind of starving, like those starving children you see in Ethiopia with the big bellies. That's not food, that's starvation. So I see a lamb like that. Him I would not be keeping because of, for that reason, that would go on the call list. It's not doing well, it's not growing well. And likewise, I would search out that mom, find out who his mom is. And she, unless she has a legitimate reason for that lamb being like that, um, she's probably on the call list too. And this ewe lamb here, I can tell you right from, just right from a glance, she's a keeper. She's built perfect. She's above average in her growth. She has all the Suffolk traits that you want. Um, she's got, she's from a good mother because she wouldn't look like that if she wasn't. And she's a good independent lamb as well. So in our opinion, which seems to be not the norm, we don't believe that you have to weigh your lambs all the time at birth, at 50 days, at 100 days. I do think that you should have a scale. Um, a practical scale, they're around $500, I think. Um, they are good to have whether you're a small farmer or a large farmer because you want to get the ballparks. So if you have a flock of sheep, be it 12 lambs or a thousand lambs, by looking around the pen, it is very, very obvious who the little ones are who the ones that are way above average and who the average ones are. You really only need to weigh three sheep. Even if you're going to market, like buying a $50,000 scale and shoot is totally not necessary in our opinion. Like get, get those weights. Once you know those and you know what weight you want to ship at, then run them through the shoot and get everyone that looks like that say it was an 80 pounder bring them through and I can tell you those sheep will only vary in weight by 10 pounds you'll weed out the little ones you'll weed out the big ones and you don't need to spend hours upon hours weighing your sheep people um, on tests have to do it it's mandatory that they do the weights so they're supposed to weigh each and every one to prove their growth rates. And um, those tests are, you pay for that too. So all of these are added expenses that are put onto the farmers to scam money off them that isn't really necessary. It is, even a person who doesn't understand confirmation or type or anything about their sheep can easily come in the barn and if I ask them which is the biggest sheep here, which is the smallest and which would look like a medium, everyone can do it. Everyone. So don't be misled by all the fancy stuff. You can be successful, choose sheep, um, have an above average flock without paying that kind of money but you do have to do it. You do have to pick for the sheep like that that stands out if you're keeping replacements. Hi, sweetheart, you're a standout. For some reason I'm in the Suffolk pen here and there's, and he's got a board propped up against the back wall and like everybody has to be here playing with it. I don't know why, don't know if there's anything in here, but it's gonna fall down on someone so I'm gonna knock it down you guys, it's not a play toy. 
It looks very fun, I know. But we're going to take it down there. at that curious age. See? I lay it down. And everyone's here. Oh my goodness. What is it? What is it, you guys? It's a board. It is. Silly sheepies. Are they being really silly? They are. They really are. Well, Arnie tried to go down the laneway with the spreader a little while ago and he almost got stuck. So right now he's driving back to where we got it yesterday and he's returning it because we've got, this is the coldest of the days and I'm glad in one way to say that the rest of the two week forecast says we're getting warmer, but for spreading manure, it's now impossible. So probably the next manure spreading spreading won't be until we take the beans off in the fall. That's too bad because uh, we wanted to get that out of the way, but that's farming. So as you can see, Arnie is just returning home from delivering the manure spreader back. So I think that's it for his day and I think I'm going to call it a day too. I hope you enjoyed yourself at the farm today and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.